Hi, my name's Yuri, and I'm a maths PhD student at Imperial College London, as well as a tutor at the Elite Prep. Today, I'm going to be continuing with a series where I solve quantitative research interview problems, and in particular, I'm going to be solving another probability puzzle. Let's dive straight into the problem. Consider six full cans of tennis balls, each containing three balls. If five balls are removed at random, what is the expected number of full cans remaining. So as usual, I'm going to start off with a hint and then I'm going to continue with solving the problem. So the hint is the following. Now would be a good time for you to attempt the problem on your own. If you've already done so, I'm going to continue with the problem. So as mentioned, we want to use the definition of expectation on a discrete probability space. To do this, I'm going to write n to be the random variable, which is the number of full cans remaining after going through the procedure of taking five tennis balls. And we can write that the expectation of n is equal to the sum from little n equals 0 to 6 of n times the probability of our random variable equaling the little n. This is just the definition of uh, this, uh, expectation on the discrete probability space. You can also think about this as the law of total probability because we're uh, separating into disjoint events uh, where our disjoint events are um, n equaling some specific value of uh, the result. Um, so what we have done is simplified our problem from calculating the expectation to just calculating the probabilities that n equals n. In order to calculate this, we are going to use properties from combinatorix. So let's just start off with uh, probability that n equals zero. Well, since there are only five tennis balls which are removed, and there are six full cans of tennis balls, it is not possible that we have no full cans remaining because there's always going to be at least one full can remaining. So this probability is equal to zero. Then the probability that n equals one is equal to the number of ways that we can remove five tennis balls such that one full can is remaining divided by the total number of ways that we can remove five tennis balls from six full cans. Notice that the event at the bottom is just going to be the union over each of the events on the top where we vary this total number of full cans remaining. Because if there's one full can remaining, there can't be two, two full cans remaining. So we have a partition of our uh, events. So this bottom event, we're going to leave until later after we've calculated each of these. Because at the moment, we actually know that the number of ways that we can remove five tennis balls such that zero full cans are remaining is zero. So here we had, uh, we're going to write that this is equal to EI, this is equal to T. We know that E0 is equal to uh, 0, and T is equal to E1 summed up to E6. 
So we just need to calculate these E1, E2, E3, and so on. So first, let's, uh, let's calculate. So EI is defined as number of ways that five tennis balls can be removed such that I full cans are remaining. There are two ways of doing this. We can either count this in an unordered way or an ordered way. And the important thing is that we've already defined this denominator t as a function of the numerator. So we, we can count in either way. We can count in unordered or ordered. In usual combinatorics problems, these two uh, may not be connected in such a simple way. So you will have to make sure that when counting, you count the numerator in the same way that you count the denominator. So you can't count the numerator in an ordered way and the denominator in an unordered way. What I mean by unordered is that we do not care about the order. So if you change the order in which you take the tennis balls from a different can, that's not going to add to the count of the number of ways. So we only really care about the specific configuration. So for example, uh, if we have these six cans, we only care about, say, uh, if we have two tennis balls taken from the first can uh, and three tennis balls taken from the third can, we don't care about which three were taken here and which two were taken here. Okay, so let us then calculate E1. Well, if we want there to be one full can remaining, we know that five cans must have lost at least one tennis ball. But since there are only five tennis balls which we're taking, then we must have had the following situation. We must have taken one tennis ball from five cans. And there's also one can remaining after that. So this would be the full can. Then we need to calculate the number of ways in which this happens. So I'm going to count in an unordered sense. So first we will select which cans we're taking the tennis balls from, and then we're going to select which tennis ball we're taking. It doesn't matter the order, and in fact, in this case, we're only taking one tennis ball so that there isn't an order to speak of. So this would become six choose five times three to the power of five. Six choose five comes from selecting five cans and the three to the power of five comes from selecting one tennis ball from each can because in each can there are three possibilities. Uh, six choose five is equal to six and three to the, yeah, so th this is equal to six times three to the five. Next, we'll compute E2. So in this case, we would have two full cans remaining. Uh, in order to have two full cans remaining, we would have to have uh, two cans which are totally empty, so we would have zero, zero, and then we would have four more cans with at least one tennis ball in each can. Since there are five tennis balls which are taken, then we must have that two tennis balls are taken from one can and one tennis ball is taken from the, each of the other three cans. So we do the same process as before. We select, uh, so first we select the can which has two tennis balls. So uh, we do six choose one to select the can which has two tennis balls. Then we have five cans remaining. So we select uh, the three cans which only contain one tennis ball. So we do five choose three. 
And finally, uh, we select the specific tennis balls which we choose from each can. So in the can which we choose two tennis balls, we have to do three choose two because we're choosing two tennis balls and we're doing it without an order. And then we have three cans where we choose one tennis ball. So we do three choose one to the power of three. This is equal to uh, six times 10 times three to the four. Next, we will compute E3. So here we would have three full cans, so no tennis balls taken from them. And we would also have three cans with at least one tennis ball taken, and then two spare tennis balls. So that would give us two possible configurations, because we could either have three tennis balls in one can, so both of the spare tennis balls selected in one can, or the, tennis, the spare tennis balls would be put into separate cans. So let's calculate each of these cases. Um, I'm going to go through these quicker now because I've explained the process for the previous ones. So 1 would be 6 choose 1 times 5 choose 2 times 1 because there's only one way of selecting three tennis balls from one can. And 3 squared. Second case would be 6 choose 2 because we have um, two tennis balls in two of the cans, and times four choose one, times three choose two squared, times three choose one. So the top one is equal to six times 10 times three squared. The bottom one is equal to 15 times 4 times 3 cubed. Okay, then E4, we compute similarly. We have four totally full cans, and we have uh, two cans which contain one tennis ball each, four remaining tennis balls. Those four remaining tennis balls sorry, the three remaining tennis balls would have to be configured as three and two. There, there's no other way. So you completely fill at least one can because you have three tennis balls remaining. So you'd have three and two. So then it would be six choose one times five choose one times one from the the three tennis balls in one can, and times three choose two. This is equal to six times five times three. Finally, E5 is not possible because if we have five tennis balls, then we would necessarily fill, uh, take out all the tennis balls from at least one can, and we have to, we would have to start taking tennis balls from other cans after this. So it is not possible to have five full cans. We can have at most four full cans. So in the end, E5 is equal to E6 is equal to zero. So going back to the beginning, we remember that uh, probability N equals I is just equal to EI over T. So we have probability n equals i is equal to e i over e1 plus e2 plus e3 plus e4. And we can plug in all the results from before. Then we have, I'll just collect the results down here. So 6 times 3 to the 5, e2 is equal to 6 times 10 times 3 to the 4, e3 is equal to 
6 times 10 times 3 squared plus 15 times 4 times 3 cubed and e4 is equal to 6 times 5 times 3 and the expectation of n is equal to the sum from n equals 1 to 4 of n e i over e1 plus e2 plus e3 plus e4. Then substituting for all these values, we have that this expectation is approximately equal to 2.1. So the exact answer was 18,018 over 8568. So that's the solution to this problem. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one.